Welcome to the Pool Nation podcast, where it's all pool talk. And we ain't talking about netting and jetting or splashing and dashing. We're talking about becoming a nation of pool pros. We talk about the latest products, trends, and training in the pool industry. Now let's welcome your host with over a decade of industry insider experience and still the reigning champion of Marco Polo, Edgar De Jesus, and his co-host, John J.J. Flawless, the fastest netter in the West, and Zach the Pool Boy Nicholas. Welcome, everyone, to the Pool Nation live podcast. I'm your host, Edgar De Jesus, and yes, I am the reigning champion of Marco Polo, along with John J.J. Flawless, the fastest netter in the West, and the famous Zach, the pool boy, Nicholas. Today, we're answering some of your business questions, and I want to welcome everyone to our live podcast, the podcast where it's all pool talk, and we ain't talking about netting and jetting and splashing and dashing. We're talking about becoming a nation of pool pros, and yes, we will talk about the latest products, trends, and training in the pool industry. But before we get started today, I want to give a shout out to the first person online, Janie. She jumped on here. Good morning. Good morning, Janie. See that? Before we continue, I want to thank our visionary partners for this podcast, the Ultimate Pool Tools, the SPPA, Blue Ray XL, Aquastar Pool Products, Natural Chemistry, Ray Pack, Heritage Pool Supply, and our newest member of our Pool Nation family, Hayward Pool Products. We want to thank them for their continued support. Zach, good morning. How you doing? Are you preparing for that cold weather that's headed your way? I am. The weather has been actually really strange down here. I don't know about y'all, but we've been getting a ton of wind, and I know probably can't complain about that with John here, but it's been really windy lately. We've had one day a cold front comes through and it's freezing out there, and then the next day it's 70 degrees, and then Monday and Tuesday supposed to get pretty cold. So we're starting to get all the calls about what to do from the customers, what should they be doing, things like that. It'll be interesting to see what happens on Monday and Tuesday. I think Aubrey was reading that there's a possibility of snow. So we'll see. The question is, are we going to have another, what was it, 2021, was it? 21, I think, or 22. And kind of where everyone's talking about here is, are we going to lose power? And the guys were all talking about that this morning. And then oddly enough, the power in the building and our whole block went out today for an hour and a half. And that's not a good sign because we're not even into the worst of it yet. So yeah, we're definitely not in that yet. Yeah. We're supposed to have about four days that are supposed to be pretty crazy when it comes to it. I think it starts to Monday morning and I got to take my niece to the airport, but that's the morning that they're saying that we might get a chance of snow between 3 and 9 a.m. And her flight is like at 5.30. So she might be extending her stay. Yeah. And not only that, I just checked the website and it said that there was like 1,200 canceled flights already and all that kind of stuff in preparation for all this. Stuff. And so I'm like, we better figure out. You either go the day before or the day after, but we got to figure it out. So anyways, and you two know exactly how much I love the cold weather. I'm just like, I better have a list of to-do things so I could stay indoors the whole time. So, Mr. Flawless, out there in sunny California and listening to us and whining about the weather. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing okay. A little tired this morning, but other than that, I'm doing all right. Yesterday threw us for a loop. I jinxed us by talking about how well our weather's been for the last couple of months. Ah, uh, you had winds? Oh, dude, we had winds like crazy yesterday. Nah. Yeah, it hit hard, but hit hard during the day. We had those two tile blasts that we were supposed to do, but I can't do it. It's like literally blowing like a hurricane right now. So we had to put those off. So we, Janie and I took a fun day yesterday, which was cool. But yeah, the winds were pretty crazy. But other than that, it's been a little bit cold in the 50s, which is pretty cold for us. Yeah, for you guys, that's really cold. Yeah, it's cold, but it's like up and down though, or when it's overcast or... It's freezing, and then when the sun comes out, you're taking your hoodie off. And then when it, in the morning, you got your hoodie on, and then when you're like four or five pools deep, you're like, God, it's hot, and then you're taking your hoodie off because you're in the sun. And then at night or when the sun goes down, you're absolutely freezing again, so you got to put on a jacket or put on a hoodie. But I love the cold weather. It's beautiful. It's to the point where you, you can't keep your hands in the water for more than five seconds or else you're like on the verge of frostbite, it feels. But no, we're good. Life is good. Like I said, the wind was during the day, which is most of the pools are running. 
they seem to handle them really well. Yeah, that's it, man. I'm doing good. I could see some of my bags coming back. So life is getting normal. Do you see them? A little bit. No. Just a little bit, right? I think it's flip. So your right, our left eye doesn't look like you got a bag, but your other eye is showing a little hint of it's crew in the back. It's like, I'm right here. Hello. Hey, big shout out to our boy, Joey Busick out there. Yeah. So what's mama saying? No, mama punched me. That's why I was there. <laughs> he hit me. And I, and... I'm sure you deserve it, brother. Anyways, hey, big shout out to Janie. Joey is putting a freezing emoji out there. Yeah, because it's really cold. Anyways, hey, everybody, I just got a message right here. So Chad Jimerson is going to go meet us down at Jay's at the ribbon cutting ceremony on the 26th. I think it's the 26th. Here, let me pull it up. So it's Friday, January 26th from 2 to 4 down in Denton. And so, Chad, I got your text. I will send you the information so that we can go down there. But I know that John and Janie will be there. Zach will be there. I'll be there. Chad's going to be there. Jeanette's going to be there. Donovan's going to be there. Brian is going to be out there. So we're going to have a little bit of a crew going out there to support our boy Jay out there. Really looking forward to that. Janie, just bring Edgar a blanket. He's already been complaining about how he's going to be cold. But you know what? Here's what happens. I got Janie's back and she's got my back. You know what I mean? So I'll go somewhere and I'm like, John, bring her blanket. John, it's cold. Tell Janie. John, you know. So Janie, I got your back. You should see what Janie wears now. She literally looks like those sumo suits that you can get people. You ever seen those, right? Those inflatable sumo suits. Well, she has a snuggy thing. She literally wears like a hoodie, a jacket. And then this big old sumo suit type blanket friggin' outfit or whatever. And she's friggin' it's unbelievable. She looks. <laughs> she said that she was going to buy you one and bring it to Texas so that you had. Man, I got no shame in my game whatsoever. I'm at the age where comfort is more important than looks. You know what I mean? That's what it's called. It's a Snuggie is what you said. It's a it's Snuggie? Called, it's called a Snuggie. Look it up. It's a Snuggie. Oh, my God. I got to look it up and see what that is. Definitely. Maria, good morning out there to you. Hopefully, you're keeping a little warm out there. And I got people messaging me over here. Let me send a message on the podcast. Come on live. Look at that. I'm over here sending messages out here. So, hey, yes, Janie, come prepared. One pool guy, what's going on, brother? Big shout out to you out there. Eric is at the ranch. It's six degrees this morning. Good morning. He's out in Salt Lake City. Here's what I'd like to do, Eric. So obviously, because I can't get up there, but have you seen the pictures of Eric's farm up there? Mm -mm. Dude, legit. Like, really? oh yeah, that's like at a whole different level of ranch type thing. So Eric, you know, if it's snowing out there, send us some pictures. He's kind of sent us some pictures. We should do a, a pool cool. nation hunting trip. <laughs> there you go. Let's use it as an excuse that we'll go do a video or a live up there from, from Eric's out there. So anyways, Janie is saying the Snuggie, which is what John was saying. I'm going to have to look that up. So I'm going to have to look that up and see. So Eric, let us know if you've gotten any snow up there. Last time I talked to you, you hadn't gotten any snow. And Janie's saying that it's ridiculous but warm. Hey, I'm game. Oh, one pool guy is plowing. Wow. Where are you out of? Where are you plowing out of? So speaking of Eric. Yeah, go um, ahead. I saw the education calendar for the Western mm -hmm. online yesterday. It looks pretty. You see it? I did. I'm excited. There's going to be some pretty amazing classes there. And then again, it was nice to see our courses that were there and then some of the other courses that were available. And I saw some new classes that are being posted a lot. there. Yeah. 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 A lot of new classes. I'm stoked, man, because we're going to be bringing Fabian there again. And we're already looking at the calendar and picking, okay, which class he's going to be taking and which one he's going to be doing. And I'm trying to get the lady to go out there with him as well. I'm trying to push her into the pool industry a little bit. Into the business? I'm trying to, right? And slowly <laughs> but surely trying to get her into it because she went to the awards and I'm hoping that she's going to be able to go to this show and see what it's all about. I'm really excited at the courses and classes there, and I want her to be able to sit and take some of them as well. So I'm looking forward to it. And I can't believe it's only, what, two months away? Yeah, it's crazy. It's right around the corner. Unbelievable. Yep. We'll be talking about that next week. we got to get rolling because we'll have our boot camp there, pre-conference, pre-con. So we're going to have those dates out there. We'll kind of be talking about that soon. Gentlemen. Let's go. Let's go because last week was, which by the way, did you guys watch the live on Instagram on Wednesday? No, I didn't, I didn't watch it. That was a good one. 
Yeah, I don't know. How was it? Who was on it? I had to do that one by myself, remember? Because you didn't come on the live. Yeah, and Zach, John started just giving stuff away. <laughs> I opened my box for the Aquastar. And then I'm like, oh, let's give the box away. And so we gave it away. And then John got into the sitch and he's like, give another one away. It'll be okay. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, it's not even on here. And he's like, who cares? Just, we ended up giving four boxes away. And then Todd called right after the, the call. <laughs> right, John? And who took the heat for it? You did. John's over here giving the boxes away going, he'll be okay with it. Don't worry about it. Give it away. Give away another box. Oh, give another one. Give another one. And I'm like, bro, like Todd's not on here, man. Like, and then Todd jumps on and he's like, oh my God, Edgar, you're giving away. I'm like, it's not me. Go watch the live. It's freaking John giving stuff away like crazy. There's Todd invoices coming. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I had no part in this. Invoices coming. So I took the heat for it. I wanted to ask both. Why is it that I always take the heat for everything, even though you guys are the ones that are always doing the crazy stuff? Because you don't have a beard. Yeah. Is that it? Because I'm not scary. I don't have the beard. So therefore, just get attacked. So I don't know. But anyways, it was a great live. So we ended up giving away like four of those mysterious Aqua Star boxes. And then we gave out a training. We gave out an ultimate pull. And luckily, our time was up because John was just on a roll. He was going to keep giving stuff away. Did you even tell Ken about the poll or do we take one from our stash? <laughs> you haven't told Ken, right? <laughs> I sent them a message and I'm like, Hey, we gave away a poll. <laughs> I might've thrown you under the bus just to let you know. <laughs> I'm like, Hey, John went on this rampage and he was giving stuff away. I go, luckily you were at the end and time was up and we had to drop the live because it was crazy. So anyways, all right, let's get through some housekeeping notes. We got some questions here that we want to get through. For everybody out there, March 1st and 2nd at Heritage Pool Supply in McKinney, we are doing a boot camp. This boot camp is going to be our first boot camp where we bring all three elements into our boot camp. So we are going to be doing our normal hands-on classes. We're going to do pumps, automations, heaters, salt systems, all that good stuff. We're going to have industry classes. We're going to do water chemistry. We're going to talk about electricity. We're going to talk about salt system, borates all that good stuff. And then new to this boot camp is going to be the business classes that we are bringing to it. So for all those business owners out there that want to take some classes, we have the first one, which is going to be a Eugene Lockman from Prestige Pool and Patio. And he has built his business. He services over a thousand pools and he builds pools as well. So he's going to talk about his journey. He's going to talk about the things that you need to have in place, the foundation that you need to have in place in order to be able to continue to scale. And he's going to share some of the things that were challenges for him as he grew through that process. Then we're going to be doing a recruiting 101. We are going to do a deep dive into kind of recruiting, what to look for in an application when you're hiring somebody, what are the right people for the right positions that you have. Then we're going to be doing a goal setting class where we're going to be able to sit and teach the SMART goal process. And then the last class is going to be influence and persuasion. That's a four hour class. And what will happen is they will talk about all the different steps of persuasion, influence. And by the end of that class, what they're going to do is they're going to have you pick a little project of something that you want to work at. They're going to pick something that you're strong at, something that you're weak at, and how to put those together in order to go deal with your scenario that you are setting up. It's going to be at Heritage Pool Supply. John, when did we open registration? Do you remember? Yeah, I think it was like four days ago or five four days, days ago. ago. Yeah. So just to let everybody know, we are officially at 41 people registered for the boot camp. So for everybody that's out there, we can only hold 80 people. It happens every time. And then I get a couple of people that are mad at me at the end because we can't get them into the boot camp. But if you want to go jump out there, register and catch us out at Heritage. It's going to be an amazing experience. Their facilities are second to none. And as a matter of fact, today at two, I'm going over there, go over and measure some rooms and start getting all the logistics for it set up. Lunch is going to be included. And what else, John? Am I forgetting anything? No, you're not. I just think that we really need to drive home the point that don't sit on your hands on this one. This is going to be, again, we talk about this, but if you guys have not noticed, and we will say it again, every boot camp is a little bit different, right? It's not the same material. We do have a core education platform that we want to teach, but 
at every boot camp, you're going to get a little bit different when it comes down to what you're going to learn and what we're going to focus on. If you think that you can pass this one up and then maybe go to the next one. Unfortunately, some of these classes aren't going to be taught at the next boot camp. Don't sit on your hands. Take advantage of this because I promise you it will sell out. It always does. We wish we could do more and hopefully in the future we can work that out. But it goes against what we're trying to do here, which is set up that environment where we can do that hands-on and that one-on-one -on -one type education to where you don't feel lost in the sea of people and don't have that opportunity to get that one-on-one -on -one coaching or be able to ask questions. Take advantage of it, guys. Go onto our website, sign up for it. You can either do the hands-on or you can do the business or you can do both of them. But regardless, make sure you do it. Get your butts out to Texas. I'm, I promise you this one is going to be worth every second of it. There's some amazing speakers there and educators that are going to be teaching some topics that we usually don't have the opportunity to to learn and then from people that know what they're doing as well so that's all i'm excited to do it i know we're going to be busy so we got our class which i'm excited about that that we're yeah. going to be talking and then we're going to you said we want to do 4-h as well too yeah we're going to just we're do, do 4-h too so you know? it's going to be it's going to be some good stuff so yeah zach's going to be doing a class on strategy the so public speaking about public speaking all that kind of stuff one pool guy's doing date dates which we always forget we always talk about everything but we don't talk about it the dates is march 1st and 2nd it's a Friday and Saturday built that way on purpose, right? So that the pool pros can get out there and do that. We're going to have some live stuff going on. It is going to be a great time. So if you're able to come out there, get out there, get to the boot camp, join us. It'll be fun. The next one is going to be March 26 and 27 at the Western Pool and Spa Show. And that's a pre-con. It's the two days before the start of the opening of the floor. And what we'll do at that one is we're going to do our hands-on classes and then our regular classes, we're actually going to do them at the show, which makes sense, right? We do our separate dates. And when we do, I think we have 11, 13 classes that we're doing, John. It's a lot of classes out there, a lot of great partners that are going out to help us teach all those classes. We're going to even have our first Spanish class that I'm going to do with Omar. Well, Omar's going to do it. I'm just going to be hanging out. Right? I was talking to Omar yesterday. I had lunch with him. Oh, did you really? Yeah, and we were talking about that. We were talking about the course, and he's very excited about it. And he was already talking to Todd to get prepped up for it and see what he needs to do in order to put the curriculum together But in the presentation. But he was very excited about it at lunch yesterday when we were talking. And he's going to be flying out here. And we're taking them into the studio. We're recording. We're going all out. That's one of the things that we have on the docket for this year. So that's going to be March 26th and 27th. The registration for that one, what you're going to want to do is it will actually be through the Western Pool and Spa Show. We will have it on Pool Nation. So if you go to Pool Nation and you go to Western Boot Camp and you click on it, you'll be able to see the information in the classes. You'll be able to click there. But what it'll do is it'll direct you to the registration through the Western Pool and Spa Show. And by the way, a big, huge Thanks to Eric and Stan and everybody at that show. What they're going to do is you purchase a ticket for the boot camp and it gives you automatic access to the show for the Western. So it's all included. So you get both. You get the show and you get that. So you'll have all the classes for the Western plus all the hands-on classes over there. So I do need to give a big shout out to our boy Blue Dream Pools Las Vegas. He is on. He was messaging me on Instagram, and I'm like, hey, we're live on Facebook and YouTube. He jumped on here, so big shout out to you. Let us know how the weather is in Vegas because somebody had posted a video. It was really windy out there, too. Anyways, big shout out. So the next thing after that is we have a 201 on heaters class May 17th in Oxnard, California at the Ray Pack headquarters. That'll be coming soon. Registration, just to let everybody know. That boot camp is a specialized 201 boot camp. It's going to be a little bit smaller. I think we can only hold about 40 people in that boot camp, but it's a little bit more specialized, hands on for those Ray Pack heaters. Yeah, and that's 201 because it's a little bit more advanced. So right. we're going a little bit deeper, and it's pretty much everything and anything you need to know about a heater and how to fix it, diagnose it, and maintain them. And Ray Pack setup is gorgeous pretty, yeah it's wow. nice right and they did it right so when you guys are there it's going to be an experience like none other when it comes down to hands-on training at their facility they have some pretty cool setups for 
anybody who's attending to be able to go through and truly diagnose a heater and understand in real time how to fix diagnose and whether what they do does the trick or not. I'm looking forward to that one. I'm even going to take one of the sheets there. I want to be a part of that one as well. The beauty of it is that they can create whatever error they want. They have the ability with the heaters. That... Just the flip of a switch. Yep. Yeah. And so they can pick what it is and then they'll sit there and go, boom, go figure it out, go fix it. So I'm really looking forward to that one as well. And then from there, we have some financial business classes that are coming up. November 9th, 10th, and 11, we will be in Dallas to do another boot camp, but this boot camp will be at the PSP Expo. It's going to be a three day boot camp. We will have our hands on, we'll have our business classes, it's all expanded classes out there. And we're also going to be doing retail boot camp as well. So we partnered with BioLab and they're going to be helping us do the boot camp for everything for retail, especially now that we're getting a lot of people like Jay Brakefield that's going into retail. And we have a lot of people that are on the retail side. So looking forward to that out there. Anything else? No, I'm really excited about the retail portion of it. We've talked about this over the years about the natural progression or career path for a service professional. And it's usually, for the most part, people look at it and say, okay, I'm servicing, I'm a one polar, and then I move up and I add trucks and add employees. And then from there, the path, for the most part, people thought was just really becoming a builder. Retail is another pathway that isn't really spoken of as often, or at least in my area as much, but I think it's a natural progression from a service tech to do one or the other, or in reality, to do both of them. And there's not much training out there when it comes down to that portion of the business, and we want to truly focus on it this year. And that's why we partnered with BioLab and Ted and the amazing crew there, because they know if anybody knows how to do retail and set up retail, it's them and to offer some courses and classes to enlighten some of us or to expose us to some possibilities or um, career growth or business growth. I think retail, understanding retail is, it could be very lucrative if you do it right. Again, if you don't, a lot of people have had some issues with it and struggles and just like with anything else, but it all comes down to educating yourself and understanding the customer and understanding the product and how to display it and how to merchandise it. And more importantly, how to convince your client to buy it. These courses are going to be invaluable to anybody looking to get into the retail industry. And I can't wait to take a part of that. That's my bread and butter as well, because I came from retail and it doesn't matter if you're selling TVs, or you're selling pumps, or if you're selling chemicals or you're selling clothes at the end of the day, you're dealing with people and people are people. And you just have to understand them to get them to want to buy your product. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that portion of it. Look at that, John. What's that? That is a picture that Eric sent me of what it looks like in Salt Lake City right now. That's crazy. <laughs> and, well, not in Salt Lake City. He's up in Salt Lake. But did you see how <laughs> it is absolutely covered in snow out there, Eric? That just looks absolutely amazing. Love it. My folks are supposed to come down but they had to move the dates. They're supposed to be here next week, but I think it's going to be in negative temperatures. And so they don't want to leave the place. Oh, look That's at that. Beautiful. That's like Yellowstone vibes, dude. Yeah. That is epic right there. So Eric, thanks so much for the pictures. We appreciate it. I love me some snow, but I don't know that I could live in it. I can go up and visit and ski and do all that, but I'm not sure I could do that. I would so, love to say that. Yeah. Of course you hey, would. big shout out to Pete the Pool Guy. Pete the Pool Guy did the same thing. He sent me a message on Instagram. So I said, hey, jump on the live. So he's out there. He's been hustling a lot lately. Have you noticed that, John? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's always hustling. He's, uh, well, yeah, he's always yeah. hustling, but he's been posting a lot about it, which is awesome. Yeah. Did he do the tip of the day that I did from Wednesday or he probably didn't listen to the live? No, he did miss a tip of the day, though. He did? He did miss one. Hey, Pete, what was my tip of the day? You remember? You got to go to the live now. It even rhymed is what I was saying that it should have been. So we'll have to check it out. So Tori out here going, ooh, it is negative seven up where your mom is, Zach. That's Idaho, right? Yeah. And last year I, when we were up there, we were driving and there's this part on the way up where it gets super cold. You could feel the cold on the floorboard by your feet, like coming through the car. It was nuts, but that's a little extreme for me. Yeah, that's a little too cold. So big <laughs> shout out to Tori out there. Stay warm. Jeanette, good morning. I'm late today. I know I was missing you this morning, Jeanette, because normally you're one of the first ones that, boom, boom, good morning. And I'm like, uh-oh. I think Idaho is trying to send their weather to us, Zach. Yep, I agree. 
All right. We've done it again. We've done it again. We've done it again. We got to get better at this. We're 30 minutes in and we haven't even hit some of these questions. So let's do this. Let's take a word from our sponsors. When we come back, without going into any conversation, we are going to go straight into the questions. Big shout out to John. Let's see here. Oh my God. Let's see. Love this. Listening from Ledge Lounger in Texas at 50 degrees and 25 miles an hour. Alexis, it is absolutely, what kills it out here is is the wind. Because the other day, Zach, what was it? I think it was like 50, but then you go outside and it's just miserable. It's just miserable. I know that John wouldn't enjoy it and John would be like, that's it. I'm not coming to Texas. Edgar didn't talk about this. <laughs> I love the cold. No, you don't. I do. I do. It's, it's, I, the heat. Yeah. John's all like, <laughs> when he came and it was muggy. Oh, that's what I drives him, me crazy. I took him to the Renaissance Fair. Dude, I kid you not. It was only like 89 degrees and we're walking in the shade, but it was humid. Like we were sweating and Janie's just loving it and she's enjoying it, right? It's like this weird, different experience. And John was like a baby the whole time. Oh, this Edgar, is this always like this? I, you know what? I don't think we're moving to Texas. I think what we're going to do is we're going to travel with, because I can't deal with this. He was just all like cranky, like a little kid. It was bad. <laughs> you can't escape bad. it. No, you can't escape it. Anyways, let me read this from Pete. We'll take a word from our sponsors. We'll come back. Big shout out to John for pepping me when I was down. Sometimes you need a friend to give us a little push and to motivate us. Thank you. Absolutely, Pete. You're the man. Now go back and listen to the tip of the day. I expect that tip of the day that I did on the Instagram live. All right, guys, we will be back in about three minutes and let's get through these questions. The HyperPool from Ultimate Pool Tools is a pool care pole designed by pool professionals for pool professionals, featuring precision-crafted carbon fiber and stainless steel construction. Go to ultimatepooltools.com or Instagram at ultimatepooltools. Pool pros have specific needs when it comes to general liability insurance. The SPPA program has you covered. With three tailored and customizable general liability options, SPPA makes it easy for pool pros to feel secure. Find out more and get covered at the SPPA.com. Now available, Pool Invoice. Pool Invoice is a pool billing software created specifically for the pool service and repair industry. It's developed for our industry and only our industry. Pool Invoice is built with reoccurring billing in mind. You can print, email, text invoices, or even send via WhatsApp. You can add reoccurring or yearly charges, accept credits, and set up auto pay. You can even see when customers have seen the invoice. It even has a customer portal where they can log in and see, print, and pay invoices. It has all your customer's information on one page, so you don't need to search through hundreds of invoices looking for the one you need. Just go to the customer profile and it's all at your fingertips. Created specifically for the pool industry, Pool Invoice. Now available at PoolInvoice.com. Blu-ray XL is the power of minerals working for you. Reduce your overall chemical costs and labor up to 50% guaranteed. Whether you have 20 accounts or 20,000, Blu-ray XL's direct pricing and free shipping to the pool trade have you covered. Improving pool professionals' profit and work-life balance is what they do. Blu-ray XL, the real mineral purifier. Visit them at BluRayXL.com. Blu-ray all day. Aquastar's new pipeline cartridge filters, available in two sizes, deliver top-notch hydraulic efficiency along with best-in-class filtration performance, approaching that of DE filters. Uniquely designed, open pleat spacing means 100% of the media square footage is usable. And these claims are backed by NSF test results. Designed with the pros' time and comfort in mind, the patented double-locking system improves safety and ease of access, making filter cleaners faster than ever before. Available now. Ask your supplier for pipeline filters today. 
Natural Chemistry, a leader in specialty water care solutions for over 30 years, is proud to provide products that make pool service easier than ever before. Its unique enzyme formulations in Pro Series Pro Blend improve efficiency of your pool program while reducing frequency of filter cleaning and scum lines. Natural Chemistry is also well known for its wide variety of phosphate removal solutions that include a non-clouding formula in phosphory and extremely high range removal with Pro Series Foss Remove or Foss Free Max. Save time, save money, save work with Pro Series products. Stop sacrificing durability or efficiency with the help of Raypack's new Avia HD models that utilize NITEC, their exclusive industry-first technology. NITEC Heat Exchanger Technology is Raypack's latest solution to superior strength and maximum efficiency when it comes to residential pool heating. With 900% more nickel compared to Cooper Nickel in critical surfaces, NITEC creates an ideal surface to protect against scale formation and erosion without compromising on Avia's 84% thermal efficiency. Learn more at raypack.com slash nitech. Welcome back, everybody, to the Pool Nation live podcast. We're talking to Mr. Flawless. We're talking to our boy, Zach, which, by the way, Zach, I just got another picture. For those of you that are <laughs> listening to this podcast on Monday, there's a lot of pictures that we've shared on the live. And so this picture came in for you. And check that out. Let me see if I can see if I can get that to zoom right there. But it is an eagle up on the mountains up in salt lake so my camera can't zoom on it but i'm going to forward it over to you just absolutely amazing so eric sent that over to you and said hey share that with zach he'll enjoy that all right let's just let's jump back over here let's see steve mr steve barnes good morning our boy david joined david joins david jones i can't speak i figured i was going to botch up somebody's name here john let's see here i'm enjoying our two weeks of winter here in arizona <laughs> that's because they get the... all right boys so here's what we got to do we got to jump straight on to these questions because every time we get in trouble so let's go on here so first question ready do you reduce your service days in the winter time i have a couple customers asking me to come every other week instead of weekly neither one of you want to go you just want to just sit there and look pretty i mean the tongue because i have heartburn I figured Zach was going to be all over this one and be like, I got this. I was waiting for you to call me. Isn't it always you first and then me? Or you want me to go first? Yes. So do we reduce our service in wintertime? I think we just need to give Steve Barnes the answer to the customer. All right. I'll jump on this one. I'll start. Oh, okay. Steve says yes, but no discount. We do not. We don't. But again, I'm probably not the best one to answer this question because we live in a very unique market where we're at, where services twice a week out here is the norm and we service once a week we go against the grain and we only service once a week out here so for us to take it from twice a week to once a week to every other week would be a leap we just haven't done yet now those are for customers that have pools right but we do service accounts that have fountains and we service those accounts every other week twice a month during winter time for sure on a couple of accounts and then usually during the summertime as well but other than that it's really hard to maintain any type of chemistry usually or good service of a, a body of water if you're only there twice a month personally or we're at in our area again i don't have much experience in other areas maybe where it's a little bit colder but yeah i don't know if i'm the, the right person for that but again being there twice a month I don't know. Yeah. I never used to do it. So when people used to ask me, I was like, nope, we got to do weekly service. And again, you even start looking at pools nowadays. And Steve has a great point, chem range and LSI index. But you have a lot of these new pools with all these water features and all that kind of stuff, that pH creeping up every week. Now you're letting that pool and that pH creep up for two weeks to then go back out there. And then let's be realistic. One of my biggest things to a lot of my customers were... I'm going to work twice as hard when I come back that other week because the pool hasn't been serviced for the two weeks, right? So it's probably going to have a lot more leaves in it and a lot more stuff sitting at the bottom of the pool. And I used to tell them, and again, like you said, John, it was Southern California year round. Texas out here is the same thing. And at Texas, we get the fall for the fall leaves and all that kind of stuff. So there's no way that you can not go out there during that time, and especially with all these new pools, again, with all these water features, the LSI and water chemistry. I was actually thinking about this the other day, driving home. And 
I've come to the realization that our market here where we're at is like a really tough market year round. In winter, we have lots of debris, lots of leaves. I'm talking buckets full out of people's pools. And then our temperatures change so drastically. It was 70 something degrees yesterday or the day before, and then we're going to be freezing on Monday. And so we have lots of rainfall year round. We just can't afford to offer a bi-weekly service. And even when I started out, there were people doing it and I just never got the concept. I was like, so wait, you want a cheaper rate? And then for when we come back, we have to work that much harder. So we took the stance from the beginning that we do not offer a bi-weekly service. We have one service, it's full service weekly. And then it also just becomes like a logistical nightmare when you have people a blank spot one week and then they're taking a spot the next week. We just took that stance, that's the expectation we set. And a couple of things on that, like we don't get a lot of pushback. We do get people that will ask, but we explain to them how important it is that we're servicing their pool because even though it looks clean and clear, and the water looks good, it doesn't mean it's balanced. And then the other thing is, is once we started tapping into that premium service and premium price, the clientele that we're working with, they're not trying to nickel and dime us. They're not overly focused on budget. They're more focused on just having their pool taken care of. They don't want to have to worry about it. Their time is more valuable. So it's not a big issue for us, but we definitely don't offer a biweekly service. That's a good point that I hadn't have even thought about. But once you have 10 guys, it becomes a logistic nightmare for every other week for scheduling purposes and all that. So, yeah, it's a no go for us. Yeah. Jeanette, we no longer offer that as a service. Legacy clients are grandfathered in, but new clients a year round weekly. Too much variation in the weather. Yeah, that's the exact was saying out here. So, you get a lot of surprises if you don't show up to a pool. And I hate surprises personally, and any business owner, we plan out our day, we have something set and we factor in, okay, it was windy, it was this or that, all these things could factor in. But if you're not in a pool once, but every 14 days, chances are there are some things that you're going to have to do that you shouldn't have done or could have been addressed earlier that would have avoided other things can be more costly for them. And not only, Zach, like you were talking about, where you're putting in twice as much or four times the effort in order to get the pool in shape. But you're also spending more money in chems because you allow these debris or allow stuff to fester and grow. You can zero out. I like to say you have to try really hard to turn the pool green during the winter time. Like when I walk back and we just took over an account, I don't know, it was about four or five days ago when I talked to a client and we went back there and the pool's like full of yellow algae. And I'm like, what the hell? And it's like, yeah, he's here every week. And twice a week. And I don't talk. I never, I make it a point never to talk down because I don't know the situation or what happened or what it is or whether or not this client's BS and me, and maybe he's backed up in payments and hasn't paid this poor guy who's coming out here. All this stuff is a reality. And I never, ever, but I'm sitting back and I'm looking like, hmm, and I'm going, wow, <laughs> what is this guy? He was here every twice a week. Yep. Yep. And he's at it. Okay. And I'm like, okay, but you really have to work hard to get algae in you know, when the water's at 50 degrees. But if you're there twice a month and you got stuff happening, it does cost more money in chemicals than it was if you were to dose it every week opposed to every other week because you're adding more chlorine because, you know, there's a chlorine demand now that you might not have had before. If your pH is a little higher, it's going to take a little bit more acid to bring it down. You know, there's Steve brought up a good point especially out in Texas too. If you have those big old leaves and it's sitting on the bottom of a white plaster pool, you're going to get organic staining, right? And to get that organic staining off that plaster, you need to raise that chlorine level to a pretty decent amount for a long period of time and maintain it in order to get rid of those organic stains. And if you were there to scoop them up the week prior, they wouldn't have been there or they wouldn't have been as bad. And all that stuff you have to take into consideration and it's just not worth it. It really isn't. Hey, big shout out to Mike with Aqua Bella Pool and Spa. Congratulations. Just had a baby boy. So big shout out to him. And here's what I really enjoyed about that, John, Zach. He posted on his page and then he's like taking the rest of this week off and he's taking the entire next week to be able to spend with the wife and the baby. And I was thinking about it. I'm like, 
That's exactly one of the reasons I love going to do pools and being able to do that is you're able to set your own schedule. You're able to take the times that you need to. So Mike, congratulations to you and the family. Absolutely. All right, here we go. Ready for the next question? How do you handle customer complaints or concerns about pool service? I just hired my first tech and I have a couple of people complaining about service. And I think it's just the fact that I'm not servicing the pool anymore, but want to be able to handle it professionally with the customer. That's a good question. That's a really good question. So I'll jump in really quick. So one of the things that I did is as I started to get to the point that I was hiring my first tech, I had that first, man, that first tech with me drove around with me for probably like over six months and we would hustle to get everything done. But what I did it on purpose to get the people used to seeing both of us so that when I transitioned out, there really wasn't that, hey, Edgar's not here anymore. And that's how I tried to handle every time I hired somebody, I was always doing kind of the route that they were going to take over. So it became a little bit easier. You do get the couple customers that are going to complain and be like, hey, I prefer if you do the pool. So Zach, for you that you have a pool company, do you deal with that if you transition from pool guy to pool guy? Yeah, me and Justin in the beginning, when we started bringing on team members and stuff, we started having an office. It was a process to break our customers of this habit of just texting my cell phone or sending their requests or whatnot. And it was just repetition. I would fire back that message that I had saved that just said, please contact the office so that they can assist you or whatever. Now it's not really a problem anymore. I don't really get a lot of calls. I do have a couple customers that even 10 years later, they still reach out to me, but I think what you're saying with the training and having someone training them and then the new person's going along to the accounts. And one thing that some of the guys do is they'll actually go introduce the new person to the customer and explain to them, they'll be taking over. If you have any concerns or anything, definitely let us know and explain that. And then we just, we have some customers. It's funny. It's almost like every time they get a new person, they're very skeptical guarded and then by the end of it all they're their best friend and they're awesome and then when they move up and are moving on and that next person they get the same treatment and we explain we're like don't worry once you get through this like you'll be best friends and no problems there i think that's the best way is just getting them the customer custom and acquainted with the new person John, before you jump on, I want to give one quick shout out on here. We got Todd from Todd Pool Service, but look who jumped on here, John. David Gilbreth. Hello, hey. friend. Happy New Year. You guys rock. David, we miss you, brother. Man, I hope you're doing great out there. And thanks for jumping on. That's pretty freaking awesome. So I think Zach is on to something there. And we hear this question a lot. And throughout the years, you're going to hear it come up and you're going to get different takes and you're going to get frustrations from business owners. And I've talked to the guys that I talk to every day on the phone, and it's a struggle that every single business owner goes through. There's no exception. If you're in the pool industry and you're bringing on a technician, you're going to get this. This is going to come up at one time or another. And I've come to realize, and I've had it happen with me as well, and it happens, and I've lost accounts because of it. Before we brought on anybody, I can count on one hand over like a decade that of clients that we've lost, not from us firing them, but just being because of whatever reason, right? Because for some reason they weren't happy with service or price was a concern or whatever it may be. But when it came down to quality of work, that is a very rare occurrence for us. And when we did bring on a technician, we started to get that type of complaint. And our first instinct is to get pissed off, right? Or to question your guy or your gal or whoever it is and try to figure out what's the problem. But there's always going to be a learning curve, right? Uh, with the technician that's there. And yes, mistakes happen. And when they do happen, they need to be corrected. And you got to talk to your client or to your customer and explain to them and just be upfront and honest with them about the situation. But more often than not, what I find the problem is what Zach was talking about. And it's just because it's not you doing the pool. It's a relationship that they have built with you or whatever technician that was there that they started with that they enjoyed. And now you are taking that away from them. And the personalities from people differ. 
And when you first meet somebody, or especially if you have one of your guys or gals going back there, it's like starting all over again. And so I like to talk to my clients and ask, hey, look, let's get down to what the root cause is here. And at the end of the day, just because they might not do it the same or you think they're not doing it the same, let's look at the end result. And is the pool service, is the pool clean, right? Is the equipment running? Is the water enjoyable? Those types of things. And if all the tools you are usually, yeah, the pool's clean, this is snap, but I don't see him doing this, or uh, he was only there for 15 minutes, or you would do this, or you would do that, or whatever it may be. And I would reassure them and say, hey, look, as we grow, we're adding on more technicians and we're bringing on new clients. There will be times where we're no longer servicing the pool or having somebody else where people are moving up or people are getting promoted or people are moving forward or whatever it may be. But the one thing that will stay consistent is the relationship between you. And I want you to know that even though I might not be in your backyard, that I am always available to you whenever you have any questions or whenever you need anything. And rest assured that we will also continue to be there coming by to check on the property and check on the pool every so often, like once every other month or whatever, because that's what we do. We'll swing by and we'll look at the pool. We'll look at the backyard. I'll announce, I'll let the customer know that we're coming by to say hi or whatever it may be. And once we do that, they seem to open up a little bit and feel a little bit better about it. Some people are going to be really stubborn, but for the most part, that's what we find the issue really is. It's just a matter of relationship, not necessarily quality of work. And if you do find it being a problem with quality of work, because there's going to be technicians out there that are going to slack it because you're not there over their shoulders and it's human nature to, to do as little as possible to try to get the same result. That's where you got to question yourself and what you're doing training that person. And if it's a matter of a difference in technique or how they go about servicing a pool, then you need to have them replicate and duplicate what you want them to do and come up with a consistent plan at, at this pool, at that pool. This is what you're going to do when you go back there and come up with the program and have them follow it. And more times than not, those complaints are going to slowly go away, but they won't disappear. It's just something you're going to have to deal with. And I've learned not to jump down the throat of your technician immediately. And mama does really good at that because I get very protective and that's your sense of perfection all the time. And I've seen this when I've been with you, when something happens with a customer and they call you, your natural reaction is just to jump, to solve the problem. You haven't even gotten the response of fully what's going on yet, but you're in your mind is going, it doesn't matter. We got to do it. And I don't know if you remember, there was one where there was a, a leak in a pool and you didn't even know, not this one, but one before that there was a leak in a pool and you didn't even know if it was the pool itself or your guy that did it. And I think your guy hadn't even been there yet, but yet you were just like, I was like, oh yeah, that's what I am. You were like, who are we going to get there? How are we going to fix it? And you started calling people and you start, but that's your normal nature and aggressive about it. Let's fix it now. And that's where I have mama where I can lean on and she puts me in check sometimes and she plays mama bear and she's like, Burr, you know, and it looks like with kids sometimes. And or get mad at the kids, and, you know what I mean? Let's think of it like this. And she helped me with that because I'm a no bullshit type of guy. And I go against what I preach sometimes, but a lot of things in life are black and white. But when you deal with people, there is a gray line when emotions, and I'm the first person that says this, and I preach this, is there's always three sides to a story. And we talked about this too on the phone, Edgar. You know, you got the customer side, you got your employee side, and somewhere in between is the truth, right? Because when people tell you something, and they're explaining their mishap or when they're trying to prove a point to whoever they're calling in there and they're complaining to or they're unloading to, you always tend to, and it's not that you're purposely doing it, but you always tend to favor the content that benefits your argument. And you selectively leave out some things that can favor the other side. And as a problem solver, as a business owner, and as somebody who is there to mediate what's going on and try to figure out and sort through it and to find the truth, you have to take that into consideration. The same thing too, when you talk to your technician, even though you want, you gotta be able to believe them, right? And if you question their integrity, then they shouldn't be working for you, you know? But you also have to understand that when the first thing they're gonna do, and it happens with Fabian, and I'll say, and I tell him, and like the minute I go to immediate like defensive mode, right? I know that like, dude, relax, relax. I get it. It's okay. And I know he does it because he cares so much, right? And he doesn't want to disappoint and he doesn't want to be wrong and it's not screw it. 
but it's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you have to be able to take in both sides of the story and then come up with a logical decision. And sometimes it's, and more often than not, it's that the customer is, it has a misperception when it's not necessarily your technician. And if it is your technician, the majority of the time, it's not really because they did something wrong. It's because you failed at teaching them or educating them on how to do it, right? Or how to do that situation, or they just never came across it. This is a really complicated question, but if I were to sum it up is pump the brakes before you react. You never want to react to a situation. You always want to act. So get all the information, be very mindful to your customer and say, I've, I've heard your concern and I appreciate it. I'm going to talk to the technician and see what's going on or da, 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 da. And don't jump to conclusions or say things until you've talked to both sides. And then once you come up with that, come up with a plan and then call that customer back. Don't just blow it off and pretend and then have a candid conversation if need be, if it's something that maybe was misinterpreted and then go from there. And then you'll find to see that they start to happen less often with that particular client when you address it, opposed to try to ignore it and don't go, okay, I'm going to get you a new technician or we're going to switch it out or whatever. And there's two things that everybody needs to be careful with in going into this. And that is, it's very easy that if you have a set standard of how things are going to be done in that backyard, right? So if you have your seven steps, your 10 steps, your 13 steps, if you're always following those steps and you have your technicians and you train them to follow those 13 steps, you're going to know that your technician is A, doing them, or at least they should be doing those 13 steps that you taught them. So you'll be able to go back to that employee and be like, wait a second, the customer's complaining that you skip number seven. Why are we doing that when you know that that's something that you need to do, right? So that opens the door for that complaint. Number two, you have to be careful as you're starting to hire people and you're starting to bring people on, you could have a real problem if you are all of a sudden, A, hiring the wrong people and all of a sudden start to have turnover. Because what happens is you're going to be in that situation every time that you put somebody new to servicing those pools. So if it's that you're promoting somebody into another position, hey, great, right? You're perfect. But if you have an account that has to go between two and three pool guys a year, they're going to be going, hey, man, what's going on? Here we go again. And that's going to put you in that situation. So, you know, we talk about hiring, we talk about recruiting, but these are some of the things that we don't talk about that when you don't hire the right person, how it can affect your company. Yeah, and it's a snowball effect. And I've honestly, I've had this conversation with a couple different people, some not even in the pool industry, but have their own business and they're getting to the point where they're starting to hire and we've been sitting down and just trying to figure out how to come up with a basic interview process. And like, you don't think about how important the interview and the questioning and the information you're able to pull. And it's not always people get through, but it's something better than just hiring someone who says they're willing and able to do the job. And so I think that's the one of the main things is when you're hiring people is like you need to have a better understanding so you're not having all of that turnover. Because again, like we talked about, the customers learn to love and know and like their technician. And something that we talk about all the time is build relationships, because the better your relationship is with the customer, the more lenient they'll be, the more willing to work it out with you they'll be if they're not satisfied with something. And I can see the difference from someone who really works to build those relationships, takes the extra five minutes to converse with the customer or whatnot, versus the person that may be very professional, but they're just going and like, I got to get my job done. I got to get through my day. Hey, good morning. How are you? Nice to see you. And then when there is a complaint, there's five other things attached to that complaint that have nothing to do with, like John said, the root problem of the complaint. And I'm a big proponent of gathering all the information first. And I have went into different complaints to where I'm disproving the customer's complaint about these three things, but I'm validating their complaint on these other two or three things. And that's been a very successful tactic because on one hand, if their complaint isn't valid, then I want to give them the proof and the reasoning professionally on why that's not. Because then it brings them back to reality of they're not going to just get away with us taking everything that they're saying negative. I had one not long ago and it, it was same situation, got to know and love their technician. We put a new technician 
And I'm getting this complaint, we're not there long enough, but then there was these other things thrown in there about they sped off and peeled out and left tire marks and all this stuff. And I was able to pull up the GPS system and it showed me every bit of mileage, acceleration, it flags hard acceleration, and none of that was there. And then I additionally took one of the trucks, the other trucks, same model year and everything, and I was in the parking lot and I was trying to get it to peel out and I'd back up and put it in drive and push the pedal all the way to the floor. And they're turds. They're little four cylinder trucks. Like they don't do it. So I was able to go meet the customer, have that conversation, explain my investigation and what I found and disprove that because it's just a matter of perspective. Your guy's speeding through the neighborhood. How do you know he's speeding? Does it just look like he's speeding? Does it look like he's going faster? How do you know how fast he's going? So I think that's before you jump all over the customer or you jump all over your technician. I think it's super important to try to validate or disprove the complaints that you're receiving. John, yeah, this is your fault. I just got a message from Google saying that I had a great 2023 year, right? And I'm like, what? I flipped through it. It says you visited a lot of yummy places. <laughs> Really? <laughs> and Zach is talking and I wanted to interrupt him. I have my phone open because for some reason on LinkedIn, I have to reply on LinkedIn, not through our platform. So I have the phone right here and normally I'm messaging people and that came up and I'm like, what? Google what? And I flipped down and it said that I visited a lot of yummy places. So we did. Thank you. Thank you, John. You're very welcome. And I want to end it on this point. Zach, you touched on this, I believe. An easy way to avoid this is to have a conversation with your client before you just throw somebody else into the backyard. And too many times I get the, on my company to service a pool, whoever does it doesn't really matter. I get people like, oh, it's weekly service. It doesn't necessarily mean it's on a Monday. It could be a Tuesday. It could be a Wednesday. It could be a Thursday. It could be a Friday. I'm there once a week and you get that type of feedback. And I'm like, time out, right? I go for one second, put yourself in their position, in their shoes. You have to appreciate the fact that by them hiring you or hiring your company, they're allowing you into their private space, into their backyard, right? This is something that is, at least I do, I hold very dear. And I don't just want anybody roaming through my backyard. And I think a lot of people feel the same way too. So they build a certain amount of trust. And in this day and age, people are hesitant with strangers, right? Regardless of whether or not they work with the company, but just to have some new person or random person walk into their backyard is not necessarily cool, especially if they don't get a heads up. So if you take the time and be professional and have a conversation with them and let them know, hey, look, we've hired a new tech. I'm excited. His name is da 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 Her name is da 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 She's going to be a superstar. And I've worked with her for da 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. I've already given her the rundown of everything about your pool and what you do. Da -da -da. That kind of stuff will blow your customer's mind, right? And make them feel like, wow, okay. It reinforces the trust that they have with you and your company and they say, wow, okay, I'm looking forward to meeting this person. And on the flip side, you need to have a conversation with your technician too and say, hey, look, this isn't only a service job or work. Part of you and setting these expectations like Zach was talking about is you need to interact with our people. This part of your job is to have a conversation sometimes when a customer comes out and you need to be professional, right? You need to look professional. You need to act professional, right? You need to be courteous. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Call them whatever their name, however they want. Those are the types of things, conversations you need to have with your technician so that they can help break down that barrier, that wall that's initially there when you first meet somebody. And you'll find that the transition will be much smoother. It won't be perfect all the time, but it'll be much smoother when you're proactive and you approach it that way, opposed to just throwing somebody else into the backyard. Because God, I get so many complaints from that. Not me personally, for our company, phone calls. And every other week, it's a different person. Or every six months, the company sells to someone else, right? And then it's a new company taking over because of the route or somebody did this or did that. And I'm getting tired of it. I don't know who's in my backyard. So that's a real complaint and we need to, if we're proactive with it, then you can help avoid that pitfall. Yeah. One thing that I would do is you can also deal with a lot of things in that interview process. So obviously you're going to hire somebody. One of the things that I would recommend you to do is when you're interviewing somebody and I've had this happen and I'll show you what they've done, but I sent a message, Corey's going a good handoff. And I'm like, Hey, what's up, Corey? He goes, the wind. <laughs> so big shout out to our boy, Corey out there. Corey, quick question for you. I think his fireplace was 
torn down and they were redoing it. And I'm like, damn, that's like really close to that cold that's coming in. So anyways, he's going, I hate my life right now. <laughs> so one of the questions that I recommend that when you're interviewing for a pool tech is specifically don't use what if scenarios. So when you talk to somebody, you don't want to ask them, hey, if you had a difficult customer, how would you make that customer happy? You're given a scenario that really they can create their own story to that, right? Because it's not a real scenario. Oh, the customer was really difficult. He's really upset. I went over and I talked to him and went over what it is that I do in the backyard. And they're able to give me some feedback as to maybe some of the things that I should do. And so I turned that situation around and now it's a number one customer. It's not a real scenario. So your question can be, tell me of a time that you've had a difficult customer and how have you solved the problem and what did you do to make sure that customer was satisfied? But take a little bit of time. Give me an example of any of your jobs, right? Because we deal with it, whether you're working at the grocery store or at Starbucks or whatever, there's difficult customers. So what things did you do to make that better? And I will tell you this, you will be surprised by the number of people that will actually tell you, well, I was dealing with this customer and oh my God, they were being so unreasonable and they were doing this and they were doing that. And finally, I just got to the point where I told them to F off. And you're like, holy crap, is this somebody that I want in a backyard talking to a customer that can be a difficult customer, right? So what I'm trying to get at is, this is a great question that can go down a thousand different rabbit holes, right? Because it's about making sure that you have the right people and that as you grow in business, you're going to go through this. John, you have somebody that you brought on, you went through it. Zach, you have people. So if you're going to grow, you are going to go through this situation and it is going to be difficult to mentally be prepared to deal with it because you know that you put the guy in the back of your head, you're going, okay, when's going to be the first complaint, right? When is somebody going to say? But you have to do everything in your power to make that process be as smooth as you can for your company. And a lot of it is going to start at that point when you're hiring that person, asking the right questions, making sure that you don't have a lot of turnover so that when you're in this situation, you at least eliminate some of those roadblocks that you might be facing. And I think I'm a prime example of that. And Edgar, when we first met, interviewing was one of the most challenging, stressful. We all know I'm an introvert. There's nothing more awkward than sitting with a stranger and trying to find out more about them. And as you always say, you've got to flex the muscle and just going through that process, it's mind blowing. And I'm far from what I would consider an awesome interviewer, but it is mind blowing. And we talk about the psychology of people and all these things, the amount of information and understanding that you can gather from a person just by having that process. And I trip out all the time today, like you can start to recognize if someone is too good, where's a red flag, or if they seem like they're coached or have been reading articles on the right way to interview, or if they're trying to hijack the interview from you, and you start to even pick up on these tactics, and you start to really get an understanding of who they are as a person. And that's one reason why the boot camp coming up is having a recruiting class on it, because this is something that all the people we talk to, people I know that, like I mentioned, that have businesses, this is, if you want to grow, you need people. And this is going to be something you have to go through. But I find that more people just try to avoid it. I still try to avoid it sometimes. And I talk to Edgar and I'm like, oh, do I really need to go through this process? And he's like, yes. And I'm like, okay, you're right. Yeah, it's just natural for me to want to avoid that whole situation. I think for most people that haven't been through it, it's intimidating. But I promise you, take it from me. The more you research it, the more you go through it, the more you understand it, like the more powerful it becomes for you. Absolutely. With that note, gentlemen, let's take our final word from our sponsors. When we come back, I want to get your final thoughts. The Hyper Poll from Ultimate Pool Tools is a pool care poll designed by pool professionals for pool professionals, featuring precision crafted carbon fiber and stainless steel construction. Go to ultimatepooltools.com or Instagram at ultimatepooltools. 
Pool pros have specific needs when it comes to general liability insurance. The SPPA program has you covered. With three tailored and customizable general liability options, SPPA makes it easy for pool pros to feel secure. Find out more and get covered at the SPPA.com. Now available, Pool Invoice. Pool Invoice is a pool billing software created specifically for the pool service and repair industry. It's developed for our industry and only our industry. Pool Invoice is built with reoccurring billing in mind. You can print, email, text invoices, or even send via WhatsApp. You can add reoccurring or yearly charges, accept credits, and set up auto pay. You can even see when customers have seen the invoice. It even has a customer portal where they can log in and see, print, and pay invoices. It has all your customers' information on one page, so you don't need to search through hundreds of invoices looking for the one you need. Just go to the customer profile and it's all at your fingertips. Created specifically for the pool industry, Pool Invoice. Now available at PoolInvoice.com. Blu-ray XL is the power of minerals working for you. Reduce your overall chemical costs and labor up to 50% guaranteed. Whether you have 20 accounts or 20,000, Blu-ray XL's direct pricing and free shipping to the pool trade have you covered. Improving pool professionals' profit and work-life balance is what they do. Blu-ray XL, the real mineral purifier. Visit them at BluRayXL.com. Blu-ray all day. Aquastar's new pipeline cartridge filters, available in two sizes, deliver top-notch hydraulic efficiency along with best-in-class filtration performance, approaching that of DE filters. Uniquely designed, open pleat spacing means 100% of the media square footage is usable. And these claims are backed by NSF test results. Designed with the pros' time and comfort in mind, the patented double-locking system improves safety and ease of access, making filter cleaners faster than ever before. Available now. Ask your supplier for pipeline filters today. Natural Chemistry, a leader in specialty water care solutions for over 30 years, is proud to provide products that make pool service easier than ever before. Its unique enzyme formulations in Pro Series Pro Blend improve efficiency of your pool program while reducing frequency of filter cleaning and scum lines. Natural Chemistry is also well known for its wide variety of phosphate removal solutions that include a non-clouding formula in phosphory and extremely high range removal with Pro Series Series FOSS Remove or FOSS Free Max. Save time, save money, save work with Pro Series products. Stop sacrificing durability or efficiency with the help of Raypack's new Avia HD models that utilize NITEC, their exclusive industry-first technology. NITEC Heat Exchanger Technology is Raypack's latest solution to superior strength and maximum efficiency when it comes to residential pool heating. With 900% more nickel compared to Cooper Nickel in critical surfaces, NITEC creates an ideal surface to protect against scale formation and erosion without compromising on Avia's 84% thermal efficiency. Learn more at raypack.com slash nitech. Welcome back, everybody, to the Pool Nation live podcast. We continue our conversation with Mr. Zacharias. Uh, Zach, let me show you this while John's not online. Hurry, let me see if I could do this before he comes back on. Look, let's see here because I can't think it'll focus, but it says, you can see it right there. You see that top number that says 90 right up there? It says your top categories are 90 food and drinks, 18 shopping, 12 home services. That's your Google review of the year? That's my Google. So I visited 90 different food and beverage places in 2023. Do we want to talk about how creepy that is? I really don't care because I have it, <laughs> it, it tracks my every. And I'm like, whatever. You're all into the tech. So you know what's funny is the other day, Dylan was saying, oh, because he wants to move out. So he was going to go look at some apartments. And he said, this is the area we're having dinner. I go to my Instagram feed. All of a sudden, apartment complexes from those areas are coming up on my phone for rent. And it was crazy because he was like, oh, I'm looking at this area. This is how much money I'm looking to pay, blah, 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 blah. All of a sudden, I go into my Instagram and I go, look at what's on my Instagram feed. And it's like creepy. And it was just at dinner. So great conversation today, boys. Yeah, I agree. I love it. 
I love yep. these questions. These are good ones. These are really good ones, actually. And what's great about them, they're not simple yes or no questions, right? Yes, no. There's a lot that goes into it. And we and there's so much more that we can actually talk about, dive a little bit deeper into it because every situation is a little bit different. But I think we did a pretty good job giving people the gist of it so that they can just stop and think first before you react to a situation because a lot of nine out of 10 times you're overreacting when you do that. So Mr. Zacharias, let me get your final thoughts. So if I've looked distracted, I keep getting these alerts from like the Ring neighborhood app next door and like people are talking power outage here, power outage there. I guess my daughter's school has a power outage. I don't know if it's looking too good for having power during the freeze this Monday and Tuesday. So we might have an interesting week ahead of us, but you know how it is being pool service, freeze, hurricane, pandemic, whatever. It means we're going to be busy is what it typically means. So are you guys closed on Monday? Not yet. Have you put a tentative in case the weather's that bad that? No. <laughs> now I'm thinking about it. So. No, seriously, because that Monday morning might be the worst and they might say that there might be some icing and some snow and stuff like that. Yeah, we might have to do a late start or do something, see what it looks like. But again, they change the weather every hour here. You know what I don't get? Why do we keep going through this? At what point as a nation are we going to prepare or as a state or as a city or whatever that, why does this happen to us? We understand it's going to get cold. There's other places in the world or in the country that go through this and it's no problem. Like for us, when it rains, God forbid it, we get an inch of rain here and it is pandemonium. Everything is shut down. People are getting car accidents and dying and there's like Sludge and it looks like the apocalypse, right? It's just unbelievable. But that you go to other places that are built for it and prepare for it and understand it. And an inch of rain is like nothing to them. Where Texas, are you guys doing anything to prepare? Because this is obviously becoming like the norm, or every year we're just going to go through this and spend billions of dollars to fix the problems they cause, or not necessarily come up with a solution to prevent it from happening again. I don't understand. We, we talk about it a lot. Yeah, but just nothing <laughs> happens, right? Does that not count, bitching about it? We and, just wait till the last minute and hope that they're wrong. You get Nine a couple cold cool days, wrong. right? And all hell breaks loose. And you got yeah. places up north, that's the norm. And got it's four feet of snow. There's no big deal. What's the problem? I think for us, especially with the icing of the roads, is it's not often enough that it happens. So they've built everything. And that's my personal opinion, right? Because we get ice days every other year or something like that. And it's two or three days. But we used to have studded tires. I don't know if you've seen those, but growing up, you'd go to the tire shop and you'd get your all seasons or your even studded tires that literally have little metal studs. And they're not good for the road. The road, but... yeah. These are infrastructure issues, right? We're not talking about people. I see sometimes you go, oh, there's a heat wave in Florida or there's a heat wave up north in New York. It's 100 degrees and people are dying from the heat, right? And I'm like, hell, 100 degrees, right? I go, that's nothing. That's beautiful over here because us as human beings we're over in this area, we're acclimated to it and we're used to it. I get that. You can't really change that or prepare for that. When it comes to like infrastructure like this, I just don't understand why we're not doing anything about it. And this is a whole different subject that I know I'm going off the rails here. It's a whole different podcast. <laughs> I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Is this new? Is this a cycle that we as like a, the life cycle we're in haven't experienced yet? But it seems to me, and this is all an assumption, it seems like every year it's getting crazier and crazier here. Like the weather's changing and like the storms are getting to be more frequent or whatever and we just haven't been through that yet look at that in california shut down the freeways if three snowflakes fall here in utah you have a semi trucks running with three trailers in a blizzard yeah. yes <laughs> jj flawless 2024 build back better infrastructure there you, go. <laughs> you know what john you got my vote the amount of money it costs during the Texas freeze, right, to fix all that crap, you think if they would say, okay, do they think it's never going to happen again? Or it's just like, put that money into rebuilding or upgrading our infrastructure so that we can avoid that and not have to pay that in the future. And then have your residents go through all this. I guess here I go. Okay. Never mind. I'm going to stop. Dude, you got my vote. It's frustrating. Hey, right here. It's right here. Yeah.
I could see a new shirt coming out. JJ Flawless 2024. <laughs> I see going. it. It's I going. just see it. I just see it. <laughs> Let's go. Anyways. Mr. Zacharias, Mr. John, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Got a lot of fun stuff going on today. Got to go down to Heritage. Going to do that. Got to call Jay Breakfield. Yes, John. I got to ask you, I still can't get over how you thank us for being on the podcast. Because I know I talked to Zach this morning and Zach gave me a hard stop. Okay. He was like, I have a hard stop at this time. I'm really busy. I got to do this. I got to do that for you. I thank you because like today you have an easier day, but I know, especially when you get cranking, your Fridays are like completely crazy. So I want to thank you. Edgar, I want to thank you for being on the podcast today. Yeah. Yeah. Zach and I would like to thank you for being on the podcast. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. Yep. And I gave a two hour hard stop just so you know. That's where we're at. Like, I'm like, okay, at two hours, I have our hard stop. <laughs> That's pretty bad, John, when he's giving a two-hour hard stop. Yes. And Edgar just laughs. That's literally his response. He just laughs at me. I, he comes to me and he's, oh, I have a hard stop. And I start laughing, right? You're telling me we need to do a hard stop. And it's every time we say, I have a one-hour hard stop, we end up going like an hour and 40 minutes. And then we're like, Oh, oh, well, there goes the hard stop, right? I was like so, jinxing it. I shouldn't say that. Anymore. I have all day. So this time I told him, you asked me for a hard stop every time, like I can control it. Next week, I'm going to do the intro. You're going to do it? I'm doing the intro next week. Nice. Very wow, nice. Oh, I love I'm it. I'm going to have you on as a guest next week, Edgar. Nice. You're going to have a different guest? I'm going to have you on as a guest next and Me week. as a guest? Yes, yeah, so you're going to be one of Why? our guests. Do I have you Zach on as a guest? Is going to be the, huh? Do I have you on as guest? Yes, you're, we're both. Yes, apparently we're both. You know what? You know what? No, here's what we'll do. Yes. So you do a dry one next week, right? You do okay. the intro. And then we're going to have Zach do the one after. The week after that, we're in studio. Oh. So okay. you can run with that one. Oh, okay. yeah. Two hour hard stop on these power outages. That's a promise by JJ. Yeah. <laughs> JJ, yeah. we've got it all figured out. See, look, he's like, JJ, 2024. Two hour hard stops on these power outages. And that's, a, I can see John going on a podium. And that's a promise with his hand up in there. And that's a promise. Yeah, I'd be. <laughs> no problem. So the question is are you going to have your own intro or are you going to follow Edgar's? I think I might create something. Here's what will happen is I will give the intro to John, right? And go, here's the intro. And he's going to be like, oh, I'll look at it. Oh, I'll change it. Oh, I'll look at it. And then that morning he won't change it. And then you know what he'll do? He'll do the Ron Burgundy thing and he'll have it on the screen and he'll be like, welcome everyone to the Pool Nation podcast. My name's Edgar De Jesus. He won't even change his name. He'll read if it's mine. So anyways, all right, fellas. Hope you have a great one. Janie, have a great one. Everybody that's on live, have a great weekend. We'll catch you next Wednesday on the Instagram live. We'll see if John loses his stuff and starts giving stuff away. So anyways, have a great weekend. Bye guys. See ya. Thanks for listening to the Pool Nation podcast, a member of the Pool Nation family. You can listen to us live every Friday here at 9 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Central, and 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. You can find us at Pool Nation or PoolNationPodcast.com, on Facebook, or on Instagram at Pool.Nation. And to find more info about Pool Invoice, the billing software built specifically for the pool industry, go to PoolInvoice.com. Before you go, this is what the pool industry has been waiting for, PoolManUniversity.com. It's the first platform dedicated dedicated to learning the swimming pool service and repair industry, a pool service community where you can connect and find videos on business, service, water chemistry, and repairs. See you there at poolmanuniversity.com.